contents of my houses. But myself and Derek, my son, set up a game in Leeds Road, selling yarn, pieces of cloth, and we put the brass plaque outside on the wall. We then set up a petrol filling station, and then the war happened and petrol restrictions, so we had to pack that up as well. So we unhooked this old brass sign and put it on the warehouse just 100 yards or so further down Leeds Road, number 55 to be precise. By 1942, I paid off all my debts. Nothing's ever killed me smile though. I have a cheery good day to all of the meat. Thank God I can still laugh. I still take an interest in the simpler things in life, like my garden, and most important of all, my family. I love him, 
and I miss him. I wish he was still here with me. But he lived till he was 96, but lately he passed away. And I'm happy that he was part of such a wonderful victory, but I also feel a bit lonely when he's gone. Great great grandma, mum, and now me. My object links me to my past, my present, and my future. It's a silver christening bundle. And it's been passed down by the women in my family for generations. I find it amazing when I hold it to think of all the people that wear it on their christening day like me. It's amazing to think that this one object links me. Grandma, and it makes me smile every time I look at it. It's this beautiful little teacup and saucer, and it's got all these gold patterns around it. And there's this valley, and there's this little chapel, and a little white house. And it comes, it comes all the way from Germany, and it even says from Austria underneath it. That's a very long, long way, isn't it? And I feel so happy that me. Grandma, she trusts me with it. She's even, I'm even allowed to play with the whole set. In that set. <coughs> it's a big bear and it's got a bandage on its arm and I wore it to my baby brother's second birthday party and I broke my arm and had to go to the hospital and when I had a pop pot on, the nurses gave it me as a present. <laughs> <laughs> well, on my 21st birthday, Mum and Dad, I had a local social club and we had a disco. And uh, my grandma, she took a shine into this DJ and she decided to start flirting with him. Ooh. Anyway, at the end of the evening, this DJ gave her this heart-shaped stone and she kept it. But she kept it in a little side, you know, bedside drawer. And after her death, I found it and I thought, well, I'm going to keep it now. So it reminds me of her. I'm not going to it. I've got this badge. I've got it in the first year. I was in this band. I played this thing called the Whack. And it's got wind chimes and cowbells and temple blocks and all sorts of things. Fantastic. We came four out of eight bands. And we did really well. Well, the instructor said that we did really well. And I was really nervous. But if he said we did really well, it's a gold ring with diamonds and sapphires on it and my nana passed it on to my mum and when I was two I said can I have that ring please and my mum said no chance you'd have to wait until your fifth birthday well on my fifth birthday apparently the first thing I said was can I have a ring please <laughs> but then about a year later my nana passed away so it's special it's very special to me I've got a lamp called Lucy Lamb Chops my mum gave it to me when I was first born, she put her in the cotton. Well, when we moved, we had a robbery. All my stuff got nicked. Same thing I've got left. I was in Pudsey Peace Action Group. At the time, it was 1982. And there was the cruise missile. The government was spending all this money on weapons. And the Russians were out to get us, apparently. Although, no politics there really were. And then must be my Pudsey Peace Action Group. That's us. We would, we'd be in all the papers. It was fantastic. We, where did we go? We had to uh, put up with Pudsey. Pudsey. Leeds, Hedge Road. Yeah, yeah, that one, be safe. Crew Common. Aye. London, Trafalgar Square. And all the, all them newspapers used to take pictures of us because it was such a grand banner. Mind you, they always used to underestimate the numbers. Newspapers, eh? You're not the same. But you we used to have this badge maker. You know, them old type of badge makers. Um, we used to put that little logo on it. We used to go around somebody's house. Have an evening. Have an evening, we'd make these things. Now, I think that badge maker went around all the organisations in Leeds. I think it did. Huh? Damn sure it did. Put two piece action group. One, two, three, four. We are one hundred and one.
brass I inherited it from my grandma. I am particularly fond of a coarse brass collection. Anyway, I inherited it. Had a bit of a wrangle with my mother because she wanted it, but I said I should have it. Because I was the one who used to have to clean it when I was a kid. <laughs> anyway, there's a plan. Here's the plan. I want a full leather outfit. And cultivate art. Horse brass is all the way around the outside. On my bum, on my arms, everywhere. Woo! It's just an excuse to wear the horse brasses, really. <laughs> You are standing in front of the Baudry table. Now, the history of the mill is about the cloth and machinery, but it's also about the people, the lives that passed through the mill. My grandma and my mum, they both worked at Sydney Bank Mill. Now, kind of 45, 49. Well, my grandma, she worked in the canteen, and my mum worked in the combing room. Well, in the canteen in them days, they made this thing called seed cake. Because we, you know, drank more years, we didn't have chocolate cake or all like that. So, this seed cake wasn't particularly nice, but we used to have it. After school, we used to come in from school and come and snaffle all the leftovers. Anyway. Being little devils as we was in them days. One night we decided to uh, open up the top down sluice gate, which ran into the bottom one. And uh, unfortunately, we couldn't make clothes down for it. And it flooded. And it flooded down so much that, well, it shot out the windows and went all the way down Farsi Town Street. So, in a hundred years, one can only imagine. The conversations that have been had around this table. I mean, personally, I've been involved in heated discussions with suppliers and with customers. But we've also had intimate chats with workers and some very difficult conversations have been had around this table. Tears have been shed around this table. But also great fun has been had around this table. Jokes have been shared. Lifelong friendships have been enhanced around this table. It's been silent witness to all those conversations and to all those lives and people and all those emotions for so many, many years. I'm a film buff. I love films. I've got this piece of tarmac and it's from the film Get Carter. You know, the one where Michael Caine throws off Alf Roberts, well, Alf Roberts from Coronation Street, off the roof. It's a pretty useless piece of tap, but it's my piece of tap, and I've got it. I've got these ice skates. I'm just looking for a bike. I'm not a bike, but I need one. It's an amazing pair of ice skates. Well, they've got like, um, that leather bit. Wow. We'd have to wait for a river to freeze over here. Or I'm gonna have to go somewhere like Canada. But I am gonna use them. Yeah. We've got these champagne cards. And they're on the wire. They're still on the wire, isn't it? We've got one this wire above mantel pieces, there's about 200 of them. <laughs> and every one of them's got the date and the reason that we popped in the court, you know, so someone's always saying it was Auntie Nelly's wedding and it was such and such his birthday. Or someone just said, well, because it was Friday. <laughs> of course, they're not all champagne or something like card or Prosecco. But it's just something we've done ever since we've been together, which is seven years now, and it's like our champagne called tree of history. It's silver. It's not worth anything. Well, it belonged to my great great grandma. He was this hideous, elaborate thing. But my mum's mate Jackal she was a jeweller and she melted it down. Well, I ended up with it as a wedding ring when Tom proposed. He took me to Prague for the weekend and oh well, we were on that bridge. You know, the Charles Bridge. Well, 
where he stands, all the buskers, everybody has their pictures taken, and then, uh, well, he'd have a few lagers and they're arguing a bit. When he proposed, I was a bit taken aback. I don't think I could answer him for half an hour. And then eventually I said, go on then. We can always get a divorce. So, I didn't have an engagement ring, so we had to go to a second-hand shop in Prague. And we found one, but, but that didn't fit either. So when I got home to my mum, I presented her with a ring on the wrong finger, wrong hand, wrong ring. <laughs> 